this video, we are going to cover smart rules and smart events for beginners. My name is Susan DeLoyer and I have eight years of experience on the Intact uh, product um, and I've got over 60 implementations under my belt. So I'm going to share with you some of uh, these easy tips to make environments a little bit smoother. So our goal today is scenario one is to create a smart rule. That smart rule is going to be set to not allow a vendor record to be uh, created or saved without picking a vendor type. In our company, we've decided that vendor type is critical because we look at reporting um, across expenses uh, from vendor different vendor types uh, to understand moving metrics. So our first example is we're going to create that smart rule. So smart rules can be found in platform services. The purpose of a smart rule is to create a rule and when that rule is violated, it's going to generate an error. So I'm going to hit an add. We have all of our object areas to look at, but we are looking for vendor. So we're going to go down to vendor. And that is the object we want to look at. So in this, we have the option to an error or warning. Error is a hard stop. Warning um, pops a little warning that people can skip. Um, in this instance, this is a no. We want it to be an error. Our events are add, edit, or delete. When we create or modify a vendor, absolutely we need to pick the vendor type. Um, on delete, doesn't matter. If there are situations where you do not want things to be deleted, uh, we can add rules on delete. So let's hit done. Here's where we add our condition and it's easy to get confused, but if you think about what your rule is, this triggers when you break it. So we don't want the rules broken. So I've already created this code off to the side, but let's go through the exercise. Field lookup is where we find those areas. So here we can see all the data points on the vendor record that we can use to drive our information. For us, we are looking at this over here, vendor type ID. We just hit OK, and it pulls in our merge field. So here we want it to say it does not equal, or it, the rule is it does not equal blank. So do not equal is exclamation point, and then the equal sign, so it does not equal and then we don't want it to be null. So the null symbol is simply two single quotes. Our error message, this is what we want to happen when our rule is broken. So our rule or our message is going to be the vendor type is a required field. Please complete and then resave. Next step is to give it an ID. So we like to name these so that we know what's happening in the rules. We also have a description to add more flavor to this, but vendor type required is pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to hit done. So now our rule is in full effect. We're going to go to accounts payable. We're going to go to vendors. We're going to edit a vendor. This one has a type, so let's delete it and see what happens. So we're going to save. And there's our error. Um, vendor type is a required field. Please complete and then resave. So we hit the go back button. We are going to add our vendor type, save, and all is good with the world. So our rule held, and once it was satisfied, it allowed the process to continue. The other item we have uh, the ability to use is a smart event. So I need to create a smart event for some custom fields I created. So if we look back at this vendor, I have created custom fields asking if the W9 has been received. I have also created some other 1099 uh, management fields um, that we can also do other smart events or rules on. Um, but essentially, um, if this has not been received, we don't want them to be paid. So um, we are going to create one that says don't pay. So when we um, save a vendor record with that not being checked, 
it's going to go back and check this box so that nobody can get paid until that W9 is received. So let's go check that out. Platform services, we're going to add a smart event. So we are going to again do this off of a vendor record. And our options, we can send an email. So we could have a smart event that sent an email when a vendor is created to create visibility on new vendors. Um, there's many different ways you can use that to send an email. Um, what we want to do is make an API call because we want to update that record. So we are going to pick API. And in this one, we want to say when this condition has been met, do this. So our condition is going to be when there is no W9, this vendor W9 received is going to equal false. So the double equals false. And this is going to be add and set. So when this is false, we want an API call that is going to um, update that to um, not allow payment. So I'm going to go in here and I want to look at do not cut check is the field I want to update. So the easiest way to do this is to go into the intact developer API library and then you can actually go and copy and paste some short code that is already pre-written to help you update what you are trying to do. Um, I am quickly updating my quickly updating my code in the background so that so we want this to update that field to not cut a check. Looks like it got a little wonky there. That's okay. Um, so it is going to look up the vendor record number. So I retrieved that from this field lookup. Um, the record number is required when you want to update uh, a vendor. It does not look at the ID. It doesn't look at the name. It looks at the actual record number written by intact. Then we want to say when that condition was satisfied, we want to update this field to true. So that is the do not pay. So every once in a while it'll have a different naming convention in the background, um, but it's usually easy enough to determine. And then we want this to be synchronous. So in this instance, once we save that record, we want it to immediately go and flip it so that if we go and look at it again, it's going to be checked. If we do not do synchronous, what it means is it's not tied to that user's permissions and it will update, but it might take about 30 to 60 seconds. So depending on who is making these updates and if they have access to do these functions, we'll determine whether or not it is synchronous or asynchronous. So we're going to go ahead and make it synchronous. And then we are going to call this no W9. No W9. We're going to call it do not. All right. So let's be done with that. So let's go over to our vendor record and let's edit this one. And that box is set to false. So this is this field is now required, but this box is set to false. So once I save this and I review it in theory, that checkbox on do not pay will be checked and it is checked. And it doesn't matter how many times you edit this and uncheck that box. It will continue to check itself unless that box is checked. So we want to create a second um, smart event that is going to uncheck it um, if that has been satisfied. So let's edit this and duplicate. We are going to leave the information. So what this says is now.
and we want to go ahead and make that false. And we're going to make it synchronous. And then this is going to be yes, W9. So now if I go in and edit that vendor and I don't remember to uncheck that box, this smart event is going to fix that for me. So I am going to click that, hit save. We are going to view. And now our don't pay has not been selected. So now we've satisfied both of these requirements for this client. I hope you enjoyed this video about smart rules and smart events. Please reach out if you have questions.